This explainer video introduces the LEAPS ID model. We will break down the model into more manageable chunks to show you the context where IDs create learning and performance support materials. We'll touch on the kinds of decisions IDs make and the rules of thumb they use. We'll also spend time on the three major phases of activities comprising LEAPS. By the end of the video, you should be able to identify the different potential phases of an ID project and what they might do in each phase. Also, you should be able to apply some of the common ID rules of thumb individuals use to make decisions about a project's scope and workflow. ID work is always contextualized. It occurs within levels of the larger environment, the organization, and the management of the project itself. So, the LEAPS uses three concentric bands to indicate that ID work occurs within multiple contexts. The first concentric band notes that ID work takes place within a larger environment consisting of societies with governments, economies, cultures, and individual citizens. Some ID work is local in nature. Some is statewide or nationwide. Still other ID work is global. These different aspects of the larger environment affect organizations, ID project management, and the activities comprising the projects that IDs complete. And the projects that IDs create can affect the government, economies, culture, and individuals. The second concentric band notes that ID work occurs largely within organizations. People and organizations perform a collection of tasks that constitute their jobs. Ideally, the organizational culture, aka the way of doing things, enables people to perform their tasks in ways that help the organization meet its mission and strategic organizational initiatives. Culture includes both what organizations say about themselves and what people do. It's important to note that what the organization says about itself and what the organization actually does may be different things. IDs use consulting skills and strategies to do right by their clients and partner with them collaboratively in ways that produce valued behavior change in the workplace. Because the training that IDs create can disrupt the way people perform their jobs in the workplace, effective change management efforts can help individuals and groups in the organization adopt new ways of doing things. Because the larger environment and the organization changes over time, IDs often need to maintain all parts of the training they create. To this end, savvy IDs design ID projects with future maintenance in mind. The third concentric band notes that ID work is project work. IDs must work with clients and other stakeholders to manage these efforts. Project management skills and techniques help IDs create training that meets client and stakeholder expectations both on time and within budget. To this end, IDs can be involved in scoping the work comprising an ID project, planning the work, including the activities IDs and others complete, the schedule and the deliverables they create, assessing and mitigating risks to the successful project completion, communicating and reporting within ID project teams and between ID and client-led teams, and monitoring project completion to rescope or replan as necessary. LEAPS makes two assumptions about inputs that should be in place before ID projects can begin. The first assumption is that someone in the organization has already conducted a needs assessment that identified a skill gap that PBT can address. The second assumption is that the organization will provide a client who can sponsor the training project. Violations of either assumption limit the usefulness of LEAPS. More information about these two important assumptions appear in Chapter 4 with the discussion of a training requirements analysis. The first major phase of LEAPS emphasizes both sound analysis as well as empathy for learners and the jobs they perform inside of organizations. Like other ID models in the ADDIE family, LEAPS consists of phases or collections of related activities that IDs complete in a training project. Analysis 
typically appears as the first phase in current ADDIE models. Analysis activities can include a training requirements analysis that specifies appropriate training configurations and ensures adequate client and organizational sponsorship to create, implement, and maintain training. A task analysis to represent the exemplary on-the-job performance that the training will address. Analysis activities can also include a learner analysis to specify what learners already know and what they need to learn to perform their job tasks, and an environmental analysis to specify contextual factors that can affect learning, including motivation to learn, the learning environment, and the transfer environment. It's important to know that these phases can overlap. Further, IEDs will be making decisions about what activities to complete, combine, or omit. In some organizations, IEDs may perform a learner and environmental analysis before they conduct a task analysis. In other organizations, IEDs may conduct these activities simultaneously. And in other organizations, IEDs may perform a task analysis first, followed by a combined learner and task analysis. The LEAPS ID model also draws on current design thinking approaches to combine empathize with analyze. Dam and Siang, 2018, note that the goal of the empathize stage is to gain an empathetic understanding of the people you are designing for and the problem you are trying to solve. This process involves observing, engaging, and empathizing with the people you're designing for in order to understand their experiences and motivations as well as immersing yourself in their physical environment in order to have a deeper personal understanding of the issues, needs, and challenges involved. During the empathize and analysis phase, IDs need to set aside their own assumptions to gain insight into the learners and their needs. Empathy helps IDs remember to keep the needs of the learners first and foremost because PBT often disrupts workplace roles and the jobs that people perform. Drawing on Smith and Reagan's 2005 model of ID, LEAPS combines design and development phases. In the OPAL workplace, IDs may complete all or part of the activities that appear. For a small introductory training project that uses job aids, design and development activities might include creating, performance requirements that provide a detailed specification of valued workplace behavior, including on the job, conditions that describe cues that initiate performance and resources people use to complete their performance, performances that correspond to job tasks, and criteria that describe the standards that performances should meet. Design and development activities might also include job aids that learners would use during their training and in the workplace when they return to the job, performance assessment instruments that learners complete to indicate their mastery of the performance requirements, and instructional plans that specify the learning events and activities that learners will complete during their training. A larger project to provide extensive training with job aids could also include additional design and development activities to create performance outcomes and objectives, prototypes or mock-ups of key training components, instructor and participant guides for classroom training, or just a simple design document. The LEAPS ID model combines implementation and formative evaluation activities. IDs may create deliverables supporting training implementation, and they may also be involved as trainers who deliver the training. To ensure that the training and job support materials work as planned, IDs conduct formative evaluation. This type of evaluation continues throughout ID projects as IDs collect and analyze data to ensure that the training will work as planned. To this end, IDs may conduct reviews of different ID project deliverables, try them out with learners, and then conduct pilot tests. After the training has been implemented for a long enough period, IDs may be involved in conducting a summative evaluation of the training. This evaluation could investigate the organization's return on its training investment. Conversely, this evaluation could investigate other questions that organizational decision makers may have about the training. Implementation consists of rolling out the completed training and performance support materials to learners. Typically, implementation involves 
planning rollout logistics to ensure they proceed smoothly, ensuring that the training materials employ characteristics that help learners want to adopt them and helping learners move through different phases of adoption. By nature, ID isn't a linear activity. Instead, ID is an iterative activity where a series of revisions produces versions of ID project deliverables. The LEAPS ID model indicates that ID projects typically involve multiple iterations. That is because IDs rarely complete projects working in a strictly linear manner. ID isn't about following the same recipe that yields the same results each time. Instead, IDs typically must revisit and revise their work. For example, ID teams typically create multiple versions of deliverables before submitting them to clients for formative evaluation reviews and tryouts. IDs may revise these deliverables to reflect the results of these formative activities. In a different situation, the results of a tryout may indicate that IDs' understanding of learner needs may be mistaken, resulting in the collection and analysis of additional learner analysis data. LEAPS provides a set of heuristics that IDs use to guide their decisions as they complete projects. As IDs complete their projects, they employ heuristics, aka rules of thumb, that help them make decisions. These heuristics provide broad guidance about the nature of ID practice and how to deal with different situations. The heuristics that appear in the LEAPS ID model are those that Vilanchika, Giacomo, and Stepich have found useful. There are other heuristics that you may find useful as well. They include the following. One, ID should do right by their clients and stakeholders. Two, ID should be an evidence-based practice. Three, ID is a team sport. Four, in any situation, there are typically several ways to do ID right, and so there are many ways to do it wrong. Five, ID work can start and finish anywhere. Six, IDs sometimes skip steps or combine components. Seven, to meet schedule and cost, IDs make and share operating assumptions with their clients. IDs then collect data to either verify or reject their assumptions. Eight, formative evaluation can include reviews, usability tests or tryouts, and other feedback loops that can occur throughout a project. Let's review what the LEAPS model tries to do. First, it advances ID practice by linking aspects of workplace learning and performance support. To this end, it places training efforts within larger contexts that can affect the performance improvement as well as training and support materials IDs create. IDs also affect these larger contexts with the training materials they create. Second, LEAPS also tries to represent the scalability of ID projects. Smaller efforts can involve fewer ID activities than larger ones. More specialized IDs may spend more time in the empathize and analyze in an evaluation phases than others. Other IDs may specialize in development, say of instructor-led training or e-learning. Finally, LEAPS tries to provide some of the heuristics that guide the decisions that savvy IDs make as they complete their projects. ID is rarely a cookie cutter activity where IDs do the same thing the same way in each and every project. Instead, IDs use heuristics to weigh options and explore their trade-offs. In summary, LEAPS tries to represent the width and depth IDs efforts to create learning and performance support materials that produce valued behavior change in the workplace. LEAPS assumes that the organization has already completed a needs assessment and that adequate organizational sponsorship exists to create, implement, and maintain the training. There are often several potential phases of any ID project. You might engage in many different types of activities in each phase that results in a variety of different deliverables. No matter what your project scope might be or how your workflow is organized, you will likely have to make many decisions collaboratively with a client, subject matter expert, and potentially other contributors to meet the needs of your end users or learners.